fired, Democrat immediately kicked to the curb and now facing an ethics sanction, liberals are stunned speechless. You would think that those affiliated with the media would realize that with the current state of the internet, that keeping a lid on stories is almost impossible. One simple tweet and the cat is out of the bag as websites light up with the news, even if it is highly speculative. That the story might be wrong, or have been distorted is irrelevant. It will get loose, and once that happens there is no putting it back in the jar. Stories with sexual overtones, especially those involving celebrities, are very volatile. People seem to crave this genre of news, so the internet, already a powerful force for spreading news and gossip, goes into hyperdrive over such revelations. Best to fess up and try to get the truth out there than to leave the internet to its own with the inevitable distortions and speculations that will be spread. Democratic attorney David Boyes apparently doesn't understand this as he worked to put a lid on the Harvey Weinstein story while his law firm was working for the New York Times. Obviously, he failed. How could anyone expect anything else? Anyway, the net has terminated its relationship with Mr. Boy's law firm, something that shouldn't come as much of a surprise either. The New York Times dismissed the firm of famed Democratic lawyer David Boy's after Ronan Farrow's explosive report for The New Yorker put Boy's at the center of Harvey Weinstein's efforts to stamp out the Times reporting on his sexual misconduct. We never contemplated that the law firm would contract with an intelligence firm to conduct a secret spying operation aimed at our reporting and our reporters, the Times wrote in a Tuesday statement announcing they would no longer work with Boyce's firm, Boyce, Schiller, and Flexner. Such an operation is reprehensible. Mainstream media outlets such as the New York Times certainly need no help in portraying the image that they are simply mouthpieces for the left. This is an accepted fact among conservatives and has helped spark the fake news accusations that have been hurled at media firms such as CNN. That these attacks have stuck is a measure of the frustration conservatives have had with a news industry that is overwhelming biased against their political views. Mr. Boyes and his law firm have only made matters worse, something the NIT has admitted. Monday, immediately after Farrow's piece broke. The New York Times issued a statement aghast at Boyes, Schiller and Flexner's conduct, reading. We learned today that the law firm of Boyes, Schiller and Flexner secretly worked to stop our reporting on Harvey Weinstein at the same time as the firm's lawyers were representing us in other matters. We consider this intolerable conduct, a grave betrayal of trust, and a breach of the basic professional standards that all lawyers are required to observe. It is inexcusable and we will be pursuing appropriate remedies. So we have a law firm controlled by Democrats, working to promote Democratic causes. So far, nothing wrong with that. Then one of the principals of the law firm chose to step over the line by trying to control the release of news by one of its clients, the New York Times. As the Times had to be aware. This sort of revelation only attracts more claims that the paper is a purveyor of fake news, or in this case, no news if it makes Democrats look bad. The question remains what, if any, action the Times will take against Boyes and his law firm. There's a very clear ethical violation here. And what Boyes did has done nothing to help the reputation of the newspaper. If anything, it only confirmed what many already believe is the truth. The bigger question is whether the Times will ever be able to establish itself as a trustworthy source. Not to be pessimistic, but without a major ownership change and a massive shake-up within the paper, it's doubtful.